Hi, my name is Lance Ichinotsubo. Welcome to Elite Marine Life by Captive Seas. We, um, my wife Mickey and I are the sole proprietors of Captive Seas Aquariums and Elite Marine Life by Captive Seas. Along with a friend of mine, Bob Gomans, we are the co-authors of the Marine Fish Health and Feeding Handbook. As part of the body of work that we've accomplished, we've spent many years in Las Vegas whereby we created installed and maintained aquariums for many of the major hotels such as the Mirage, the Tropicana Hotel, Caesars Palace, the Fremont, the Gold Coast, many many others. Additionally, I've been very fortunate to travel the world doing aquariums, which we love. I've been to Saudi Arabia setting up an aquarium for the Aramco Museum, which is the oil ministry, uh, Singapore doing the rainforest cafes, uh, and many of the Caribbean countries as well. I've also spent many months in Turku, Finland, working on putting aquariums on the cruise ships for Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. I believe we've done three massive ships there. Today we can uh, talk about cryptocarrion, saltwater ick. Cryptocarrion irritans, also known as saltwater ick, is very common and it has been responsible for the loss of many fish over the years that we've been involved. Cryptocarrion saltwater ick is actually a protozoan which uh, belong to the group of ciliates. Being a ciliated protozoan, it's related to brooklynella and uranema and a few other things, all of which respond to similar treatments and medications. In as much as recognizing the diseases are very important, Fortunately, we have similar treatments that work well against most of these ciliated protozoans. Now, bear in mind that the majority of these protozoans look similar to the untrained eye on fish. Suffice to say that cryptocarrion will bore under the epithelium into the skin. When you see these white spots on the fish, what you're seeing is a buildup of slime with the parasite buried under the skin. Once you've determined that you're dealing with cryptocarrion, it would be recommended, it would be highly recommended to remove those fish and place them in a separate hospital and or quarantine tank for the duration not to be less than 30 days. Now by definition, quarantine is from the Latin or Greek for 40, quattro, which means it's would, it would be best to quarantine your fish for a minimum of 40 days. Okay. That will allow treatment of the fish separately and allow your main show tank to go fallow and or dormant so as to allow the parasites to die off. Remember that these parasites are obligate and they require a host to continue their life cycle. But because of that life cycle, we have to be cognizant of timing. We believe there are many things that may hold true and that there are many things that may not hold true. Uh, for example, feeding garlic to your fish when they're diseased is beneficial in that allicin, the extract from garlic, will build natural immunity within the fish itself. And it has been shown that when dealing with saltwater ick, fish can, in fact, develop an immunity over time to the parasite. That's not to say that they can do this with all parasites, but at least for cryptocarrion, it has been proven. However, we believe you should always isolate the fish, treat them in hyposalinity, and use a proper protozoicide such as copper sulfate and or chloroquine diphosphate. Now in the case of cryptocarrion, because they bore under the skin, they remain impervious to such things as freshwater baths while they're on the fish. The only time this parasite is susceptible to being killed is during their division stage when they divide and come up looking for a new host. The tomites are susceptible to the medications that are in the water. No other stage of their life cycle is as susceptible. And also bear in mind that although you may not see any parasites on the fish visually, that doesn't mean that they're not present. 
Because remember these parasites can bore under the skin and can be embedded in gill tissue or other places where you cannot see. Now there are things you can add to your life support system which may help, such as ultraviolet sterilization. Bear in mind, however, that they need to be sized properly, that the lamps need to be fresh and not older than six to eight months, and that the flow going through the units need to be adjusted such that you can estimate the, the dwell contact time and therefore the kill rate. In order to kill protozoans, you need a really large amount of ultraviolet radiation. It is not practical. However, on smaller units, on a side stream, whatever goes through the light, providing it's of the proper dwell contact and flow rate, can and sometimes will die. But suffice to say that this is not the cure of the disease. It is merely going to kill parasites or render them unable to reproduce. That is more of the target because of the lower wattage of ultraviolet radiation. Now the majority of our customers have reef aquariums and with the presence of corals and invertebrates that makes treatment for cryptocarrion very difficult because the, the primary medications used would be toxic to your corals and invertebrates as well. That makes it difficult. However, we do have access to medicated foods these days which are very beneficial and these foods are fed very carefully because obviously you do not want the, the food to be falling onto your corals. It could be detrimental to them. Making sure that your fish get fed medicated foods and that they eat all of it is very important. Although freshwater baths are very beneficial when trying to eradicate certain parasites other than cryptocarrion, it is not beneficial to cryptocarrion itself. I would highly recommend referring to our book, The Marine Fish Health and Feeding Handbook. In it, you will find information regarding the recognition and treatment of many diseases, most of the common ones that you will encounter while trying to maintain your aquarium. Again, my name is Lance Ichinotsubo, and I thank you for coming to Elite Marine Life by Captive Seas.